Hey guys, so we're going to be taking a break from reviewing the Ubuntu based distributions and even the mainstream distributions in today's video. Today I'm going to be looking at something a little different, Simplicity Linux, available from simplicitylinux.org. They have recently released their 14.7 beta of what is an attempt to create a full-fledged operating system out of a puppy Linux based. This is a particularly interesting project and I have got to say I'm a little bit surprised that more distributions or more developers aren't actually trying to make full distributions out of puppy Linux because puppy although being well known for being very 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 lightweight being very very portable and being very very versatile it still doesn't seem to have expanded beyond that little niche that it's created for itself, even though it certainly is very good at running on lots of different types of hardware, particularly older machines as well. So Simplicity Linux appears to aim to want to fix that. So here is the website, simplicitylinux.org. But the thing that really surprised me about Simplicity Linux is its ranking on DistroWatch. If you look down there in the bottom right-hand corner, it ranks at 23 in the last six months. That came out of nowhere. That is certainly... Um, certainly a lot higher up than I thought it would be, especially when you consider that Slackware is down at 25 there. Uh, Slackware, of course, will probably be in that area of the charts, though, for a good long time to come. Slackware fulfills a need uh, and a particular niche in the market that will probably be there for quite some time. However, the future of simplicity is certainly uncertain. So let's have a look to see what it's like today. Let's have a look to see uh, how fully featured it is and how suitable it might be for the desktop environment. So I'm going to just get rid of the old browser here and I have booted directly into the live CD. Now, the reason why you're not seeing the boot up process, as I usually show with these kind of videos, is simply because that it misset the resolution um, when I logged in. It wanted to set it to a really, really big resolution, what was bigger than my actual screen. So I decided to correct the resolution and start recording from there. And this is the introduction screen. And um, we are probably better off just starting with the connection. So the simple uh, network setup, I think, should do the job. It will just connect us to the network and I think that should be uh, fine. So as you can see here it's certainly got um, it's got the panel down at the bottom it's got the uh, LXDE panel here at the top because um, the LXDE is the desktop environment that they have decided to run with with the desktop installation and probably the one that I would also recommend. I mean Puppy Linux is a lightweight distribution and it would be a shame not to capitalize on that. Uh, and it being based on Puppy, of course, will probably be as um, as functional on um, as much different types of hardware as Puppy itself, which again speaks quite well for it. So some, let's have a look at the software that comes bundled with it. So they actually have set up the menus a little differently to what I'd expect. For example, there is a calculate um, section, which I got to say was, was one that I wasn't really expecting to see there, and personal and document. Uh, usually they are sort of put together in like an office section, or at least they are in the Ubuntu-based distributions. Fun as well. Not games, but fun, which is also quite interesting. Now, I suspect this is probably more from the way that the, pu uh, the Puppy Linux package manager, m package manager is put together rather than um, anything the Simplicity Linux are doing. Uh, it brings uh, with it LibreOffice as well, something which you wouldn't expect to see in a Puppy-based distribution. But again, this is an attempt to grow Puppy into a full Linux distribution. So certainly uh, LibreOffice would give it some kind of standing in that department. Uh, does it come with GIMP? I don't see it. I don't see it. It comes with um, Ink Light, the vector editor. Um, but I would imagine that it's not particularly difficult to install it. Also, you can do uh, draw and impress for some reasons, put in the graphic menu as well. Not done on Ubuntu distributions and not done on Fedora either, if I remember correctly. What have we got here? Internet. Let's see. Well, it comes with Dropbox pre-installed, which again, it's a bit of an odd choice because Dropbox, of course, uses a proprietary uh, piece of software when it comes to synchronizing its uh, folders. Now, of course, it, it's it's all too natural to include it in the repositories, but again, unusual to include it in the uh, actual installed as part of the software bundle. Uh, Google Chrome as well. Uh, again, an unusual choice, but 
if you want to sort of expand it into a full, fully fledged distribution and to have you know bundled software that people are going to use. I mean, there are a lot of people out there who use Dropbox. There are a lot of people out there who use Google Chrome. Uh, you have Pigeon there, which uh, of course is something that a lot of people like and use readily. Um, I know that a lot of the Ubuntu-based distributions, of course, try and include Empathy as part of their original software bundle, but I don't think that many people are particularly big fans of Empathy when uh, there is a perfectly good, you know, when when Pigeon uh, seems to be by and large the preferred choice. So it almost seems, but I could very well be wrong, that a lot of distributions are actually pushing empathy on us rather than Pigeon. Maybe it integrates better into the existing libraries of a of a pre-installed bundle or whatever. I don't know. Uh, and you've got a lot of these um, puppy podcast grabber, and that's a particularly unusual one. Uh, sea Monkey. Uh, it comes, of course, with Transmission. Um, what else we've got here? Oh, my uh, mouse integration with the virtual machine isn't playing nice today. What have we got here? The utilities, a lot of these come with the standard utilities as well. So if, for example, we were to go to setup, we could use the good uh, old fashioned puppy universal installer. And it gives us a lot of options when it comes to things like installing to the USB flash drive, installing to a USB hard drive, installing to the internal IDA and SATA flash drives. Uh, there we go, internal IDA or SATA uh, or IDE or SATA hard drive. Now, if you were to install, uh, and it also refers to itself, of course, as the Puppy Universal Installer. But like I said, this is a beta release, um, but it also makes no apologies for being based on Puppy Linux as well. Um, so a lot of the, uh, I suppose the big thing about this is that if it wants to become a full-blown um, desktop solution, um, the install process will probably at some point have to break away from the Puppy Universal Installer. Uh, Puppy Universal Installer is great for Puppy because it's a, a, a sort of a, a swift and easy and versatile deployment, but it is it has a very, very clunky installer. I actually gave it a run through uh, before I actually started uh, recording this today and you have to partition it yourself uh partition the entire setup yourself through gparted if you want to do the traditional install um and uh, and and it is it again it is a bit clunky there is a lot of text that you have to read um and even then it's very very easy to make a mistake um there are a lot of choices that you make and there are a lot of these like warnings um you know if you make the wrong decision here you will break your system um and there are a lot of them. So you make one sort of wrong choice on this, or you make one kind of uh, mistake on through the puppy installer and you have botched your installation completely and you have to start again from scratch and start again with repartitioning stuff. So it can be a little bit difficult. Uh, it even asked me at one point to add the, um, the boot record, the grub boot, the boot record to grub manually as well. And I was expecting to see a, an install procedure for that that was a little bit more automated. Um, so I've got to say right off the bat, there probably is, like I say, I only had a brief look at the install process, but it was difficult, clunky to navigate. There was a lot of text that you had to read through, which you don't often get with other installation processes. So when it comes to the actual install process, um, I, you know, there is a lot of work to be done there. Um, it would be particularly fantastic actually to you know to bring in something uh very similar to what of course the the ubuntu based distributions use uh, or even what there was the, what we saw in linux mint the kde edition as well that was also quite good again those are probably clunkier for what simplicity linux might want but if it's going to be a full-fledged desktop based distribution um user friendliness i think is particularly a key aspect here i mean puppy can sort of kind of um pull the card of uh not um, of, of not being as user friendly as possible because it is a distribution for a specific niche. But when you start going into the desktop market, I think you need to be sort of more. Um, it, it needs to be sort of less clunky, a little more easy to understand, a little less reading, a little more automated, I guess. Um, so it also again comes with this nice little fancy dock down here at the bottom, a nice little bit of eye candy. Um, it also comes with a rather peculiar application finder. I'm not entirely sure what this is. Um, Obviously, well, you use it to find applications. That's, you know, you don't need to be a rocket surgeon to work that one out. But um, this wouldn't, I don't know. Like, I'm not entirely sure. Is it, I mean, the, the LXDE menu is fantastic. Um, oh, it even comes with some, you know, like uh, recent documents here. So, that's, that's, you know, it comes with some, comes with some bonuses. But like I say, one of the things I like about LXDE is the fact that it's just so simple to use and navigate. And this application finder, it seems to be 
solving a problem a second time almost because you know maybe that maybe there are pro programs in the application finder that uh that aren't installed and i'm assuming just judging from the look of this that uh that these are all the installed programs it's not like a uh what you call it a uh package manager um for installing new package <laughs> installing new packages um no, it certainly isn't. Uh, again, of course, it also comes with the Firefox browser as well, um, which you sort of kind of expect. So it comes with Firefox and Chrome. And uh, the distribution itself, it clocked in at um, slightly over 600 megabytes as well, or significantly over 600 megabytes, but less than 700, um, which is what you would expect for a something of a lightweight desktop distribution because then it can fit onto a CD. Um, I'm not entirely sure why so many distributions still maintain that standard of trying to keep a distribution under 700 megabytes uh, to keep it onto a regular CD. I mean, it's not like DVDs are expensive. It's not like DVD writers. You can't, you know, you can pick them up for like £10 on eBay, eBay nowadays. Um, but I guess maybe there is a reason for it. Maybe it's, it's still playing true to the original maxim of uh, being able to revive old hardware. And I guess I can sort of respect that. I mean, I've got CD uh, drives from goodness knows how long ago, 10, 15 years ago or whatever. So, this distribution, it's an ambitious project. It's a hugely ambitious project. And from what I understand, there's only one, re one release, one full release before this. Um, so it's definitely uh, a growing distribution. Um, and it's definitely staying true to Puppy arguably too true to puppy because puppy of course isn't i mean it is user friendly for what it is but it's not user friendly if you compare it to uh, other desktop distributions um but there are a lot of benefits a lot of benefits to be gained from using a puppy base namely in terms of it being lightweight and fantastic at reviving um old hardware and I, when i say old hardware i mean really old hardware i mean i, I mean stuff that you couldn't recover with a lubuntu installation old um so this is, you know, this is talking. This is talking about reviving laptops that don't have Wi-Fi cards. This is, you know, with, with the old four, three screens. This is long before that. Um, another thing, as well, of course, in in the sense that it stays true to Puppy, is that uh, everything's in root. Um, again, not impossible to um, to you can you can sort of revert back to a non-root based installation. And I've got to admit, having having a distribution that does stuff in root by default it can make things a lot easier and i don't think it's always necessarily the security risk that a lot of people make it out um i know a lot of you are going to crucify me for even suggesting that and i certainly wouldn't advocate like i don't even root my android and a lot of people uh, a lot of you guys in the comments keep telling me i should try and root it so i can do new and exciting things with it but um but I, but I think that you know having the option there, it makes it it can it can make things quite user friendly. I don't think there's going to be too much in the way of, um, of security errors. I don't know. Maybe actually, mm, you know, maybe if Linux um, based distributions kind of get off the ground and people start writing more malicious uh, viruses and software uh, aimed at attacking Linux systems, then um, then the uh, then it's probably going to be far too dangerous to to work in root routinely. It's always been something that I've been vehemently discouraged against doing is working in root if you don't need to work in root. Um, and Puppy does actually come under quite a lot of flack for for its uh, use of root and, and, and that it, it kind of puts its users uh, in the administration seat all the time, which, yeah, I guess it is actually come to think of it a bit of a bit of a nasty security flaw but then again puppy uh developers they do say that it really helps with the usability and it just makes things very straightforward and on a portable based distribution that kind of security is less of a problem especially when uh it's a you know a temporary on a thumb drive kind of uh deployment that being said though you apply that to a desktop installation and then you, you you run it as root all the time i guess you can really run into some big security problems there so i don't know i mean what what are your thoughts on this particular debate uh let me know down in the comment section below because it would be quite interesting to uh, to hear you guys on it i suspect you have a lot of experience with dealing with administrating a network as root but um like i say it comes with a good software bundle it comes with a lot of software actually it comes with a lot of these little gadgets and a lot of these gadgets are quite um they're almost quintessentially 
puppy Linux little gadgets, um, little sort of bits of software that kind of just sometimes are a little bit of fun, sometimes do a very little job in a simple way, like P mount here. This just designed it. Rocks Farm Manager. It comes with Rocks Farm Manager and it comes with the LXDE one. Uh, both um, file managers are, are, are pretty good. Um, I would say the PC Man FM, which is this one, is probably the better one. It's the more full featured one, but you would expect that because it is a lot bigger. Rocks is tiny little piece of software. Um, so like I say, it's definitely rough around the edges, but then again, it's got beta in big letters on the desktop wallpaper there. So certainly um, that's got to be taken into account, especially when it comes to say the, the, the aesthetic of it. Um, I would imagine the aesthetic of it, because it does look a little grungy at the moment. It doesn't look like visually like a distribution that's the 23rd most popular distribution on distro watch but it probably will do when it comes to release day so i'm certainly not going to hold uh any any i'm not really going to hold any marks against it as a bet beta release anyway because um like i say a beta is quite an ambiguous term nowadays uh to me it kind of works like you know you have an alpha release which is they try out different combinations of software see what people like see what people want to use see what works with what and then you know try and see how that lines up with the libraries and the dependencies and whatever then they will come up with an idea through the alpha testing, which they will present in beta. And then beta is when you have like a feature freeze where there aren't going to be any changes to the packages added or or, uh, or the features added or the philosophy or anything like that. But rather the beta phase is for getting down the bugs. And then once you've got the bugs, then you release a release candidate, which will then directly turn into the actual candidate, um, the actual released version if there aren't any bugs in it. Uh, the release candidate stages course isn't something that all distributions would have, but only ones that had vehement testing procedures, aka Linux Mint, for example. And of course, because Linux Mint is already based on Ubuntu, which is in and of itself quite well tested, they don't need an alpha phase. In fact, do they even have a beta phase anymore? I know they used to. But anyway, I am getting off track. Again, a very ambitious project. I would really, really, really like to see this uh, where this goes. I think there is definitely 100% room for a puppy-based desktop distribution. Um, but I think one of the things that it would be worth focusing on is trying to move away from the roots of puppy and further into the desktop market and, and try and perhaps focus on a lot of um, usability features that you might see in other desktop-based distributions. Again, that is certainly easier said than done. That is a big ask. And again, it's you know this is, uh, for example, working up to its second big uh, you know sort of distribution release. So. You know, I, I'm being a bit of a dick here by even suggesting that all of these features should be added for it to become a perfect distribution. But um, I certainly like the direction it's moving into. I certainly like the passion behind it. I certainly like the logic behind it. Um, and I like the idea that it certainly um, bases its distribution off something a little more unusual. But still, you know, Puppy Linux, good distribution, very solid distribution, especially for what it's really designed to do. And Simplicity Linux looks like it can take a good shot at at you know uh, expanding the user base that that you know that puppy you know the expanding the user base of puppy linux users basically so that's about it for me today please let me know what you think down in the comment section below if you have any experience with this distribution yourself i mean it is the 23rd most popular in the last six months on distrowatch.co.uk so there are certainly a fair number of people using it anyway that's about it for me today thank you very much for watching until next time i have been chris ware and uh, you've been awesome take care now